Now guys, the advice you will get from most tech YouTubers is don't cheap out on your power supply. And that overall taken like that is actually good advice. However, I find that most people, really 99% of people, save money in the wrong places with power supplies and they even overspend in places where it's not needed. But in this way, they don't get the actual result and they are not actually following the advice. What do I mean? Well, we'll cover that in this video today and I will hopefully guide you into how to buy in a good power supply and every power supply has a certain role depending on what you're using it for. Test bench, personal PC, PC to sell, right? And we will also cover how the thing I have by my side inside that black pocket actually saved my house from catching on fire. And no, it wasn't clickbait. It literally saved basically a floor of my house from catching on fire. So let's get started. Now, what most people do when they hear the phrase don't cheap out on power supplies is they go on Nvidia website, they see the recommended power supply for their GPU or on AMD website, obviously. They see how much their uh, CPU draws. Maybe they look on some online calculators, how much components draw, and then they just buy, let's say, a certain amount of watts more. Okay, so for example, you go ahead, Nvidia website, RTX 4070 Ti, you look at the recommended power supply, it says 750 watts, you just buy, a 1000 watt power supply and you think you're following the advice of not shipping out in your power supply well chances are you're actually not because in that number there is already an inbuilt tolerance and the number is calculated based on the worst case scenario in which you're using an i9 which draws a lot of power with a lot of case fans and you are just saturating the bandwidth to the max so you don't need to add an extra uh, headroom because it's already inbuilt in the calculation. What you should actually be focusing on is the quality of the power supply, not the wattage. So don't make the mistake of buying oversized power supply. If you buy them oversized, you will actually lose efficiency as well. And surprisingly, consume more power because the efficiency curve on a power supply is at around the 50% mark. 50 to 70 is really the sweet spot. If you look at the curve, it kind of goes like this if it makes sense. So you really wanna stay in that range. So if you actually get a too big of a power supply, you're gonna lose on that curve because you will be towards the 30% mark, if it makes sense. So that's the first issue. Now, one thing you can look at, pretty simple, is the certification. Now, certifications are not everything because I know a few power supplies which are 80 plus bronze or 80 plus silver, and they are actually better than some power supplies which are 80 plus gold. Now, for example, EVGA unfortunately has gone out of business, but EVGA power supplies, especially their EVGA P series was extremely well made. I have a 600 watt PSU from EVGA, which today, up until this day, I'm using to test all of my hardware. It's an 80 plus white, so it's not even really 80 plus certified because it starts from bronze and uh, it runs perfectly fine, no issues at all. And it has good inbuilt protections, which is what we will cover later on. So good rule of thumb is yes, look at the certification, but certifications are not everything. Also, if you're looking at the certification, make sure it is 80 plus. You don't want those fake certifications which you see around like 90% plus, that's fake, that's a fake label or 82% plus, that's one way to circumvent the marketing and like try to sell you something as better of the 80 plus certifications where a matter of fact, it is worse because what they do is they test the efficiency, it comes out to be 82, but they don't have the standards of the 80 plus certification. I don't wanna get too nerdy about those things, okay? So whatever, just know that you need to get the real 80 plus certifications, but it's not everything. What you wanna do is get a good brand power supply read the reviews online, just document yourself, and uh, hopefully read the, the reviews from a few people, maybe even independent, smaller YouTubers. Now, unfortunately, I don't really do reviews of power supplies, but there, it's full of channels that do, and just uh, don't just trust the big uh, brands of reviews because uh, YouTubers, they're all pretty honest, but uh, some of the online magazines sometimes, you know, if you can read between the lines, they still tell the truth, but they will present it in a way that's not always correct, if you know what I'm saying. So you wanna get a good brand power supply. Now you might be saying, okay, so what if I get just like a Corsair or a Seasonic PSUs? Are all of these good? Well, actually it depends because not all of the power supplies 
uh, made by a certain brand are actually made by a certain brand because they have OEMs that actually make what's inside the power supply. So what you're buying is just like the packaging, the marketing, the cables, but uh, another company like for, for example, Superflowers makes the actual power supply. So you really want to document yourself a little bit. Some brands off the top of my head I can recommend is Seasonic is very good, even though I don't work with them because I'm too small of a YouTuber, but it's what I use in my personal PC. EVGA, they're great. They were my favorite, but unfortunately they've gone out of business. Corsair is very good. Asus are too expensive, but very good. And also Xilence is a budget brand I really like. Another budget brand I really like is uh, LC Power. Personally, I really like them. These I've had on the channel. If I use them, I will cover them a little bit, even though I don't have full-fledged reviews, if it makes sense. Just to sum this whole thing up, you wanna focus on certification, good name brand, and get enough watts, but don't waste money on too many watts, if it makes sense, it's pretty simple. Now, let's actually cover what's in this black packaging to my right, okay? Now this is a Cooler Master power supply, 1200 watts, 80 plus platinum, okay? The kind of power supply that nobody needs, it's massive, okay? So why am I saying that this power supply basically saved me, saved my house. Well, because up until two years ago, everybody was talking about mining, cryptocurrency, and all those things, okay? So everybody was just building mining benches and stuff, right? Okay. Now, me as well, I really like the tuning, overclocking aspect of things. If you follow the channel, you know, uh, with all the tutorials I make, all the builds I make. Uh, but so, I was really fascinated by the tuning side of mining, you know, just setting the timing, set, getting the memory right, and also the possibility of like making money by just having a PC running, which is pretty crazy, right? So I experimented with it a bit, and uh, I actually bought an old mining bench. I have the video on the channel, but it's like very young me, so if you wanna laugh a bit and see a badly produced video, I will put the link to that video uh, here, but I bought a bench, this power supply was in that bench, and so I used it for some testing over the years. So for a period I had like a few cars running, just mining, I always, I've always done like mixed because uh, I wanted to like try AMD cars, Nvidia cars, you know, I, I wasn't really into it for the money. Matter of fact, if we count the hardware, I think I didn't really make anything, uh, but I had this thing running for quite a while, like continually, probably like, three months just running. But what happened is unfortunately, the guy who had the PSU before me ruined the cables a little bit. Now, since it was an old DIY test bench, the cables were just running through it. I didn't really uh, rebuild it very much. And so what happened in short is there was a short circuit. With good PSUs, short circuit, it just means that the PC turns off. However, in this case, it was like a weird thing because I think it happened from the outside. So like the card itself was like sending an over voltage to the cable back, if it makes sense. Well, whatever. It basically created a tiny fire, legitimately. And it even burned the port of my power supply. So now I will show you, hopefully you can see it. But this is a GPU port. And it's also why you should not make six pin holes on your power supply, you should make eight pins. And it was fully burned. Like the cable was burned, this was burned, and there even was a little flame. I didn't catch it, but when I opened up the, the place, um, there was burning smell. But the power supply safely turned off by itself. And I actually did the mistake of going there and turning it back on again and trying to plug the cable the burned cable in different ports because I did not see that it was burned. And the power supply not only saved itself because unfortunately I did all of that on a desk which was in wood. So if it caught on fire, my whole floor would have caught on fire, literally. Um, and it did catch on fire, but it was uh, handled by the PSU. Not only that, but it also saved all my graphics card, my motherboard, everything, even my, po my power plug. Nothing was harmed except for this single plug on the power supply. So if you're doing test benches, custom loops, things which might go wrong, which is not, an, not necessarily your, your daily PC, right? But just things of like being a tech enthusiast, a good power supply can literally save you. So this I will keep using. I have isolated the port and I am still using it today, every now and then if I need it, since it's a, such a high wattage PSU and it's a very good one, 80 plus platinum. With that said, I hope this video was helpful and if you need any kind of recommendations or just if you want more questions, if you like me to do those kind of nerdy in-depth videos, 
please drop a comment tell me if you need something tell me if you have any suggestion and hopefully you will drop a like and a sub and i will see you in another video on my channel which will be better than this because we are gonna keep improving so see you in the next one guys bye